Well, we have a great God, and uh, he's working in Thailand. I want to take just a minute and let you know what's happening there. As you know, the flood came through uh, the northern part of Bangkok in October of last year, and we were forced to leave. The entire team uprooted, and we moved three hours south and lost almost everything that we'd built. Uh, most of our language school students left the area. Uh, most of our church members left the area, and it was about 10 weeks before we could go back for the first time. As soon as we could, we began driving back from the new place where we'd settled back to the old place, about three hours drive every Sunday morning, and we would hold services through the day and then drive three hours back again Sunday night. We've done that for the last eight months now, and the church has slowly uh, grown back, and as people have trickled back in from wherever they ran to when the flood came, uh, they've become faithful again to the church. There was another church in the area also that was pastored by a Thai man. He's the younger brother of my assistant pastor. He's been a Christian for many years, a good, solid man, a soul-winning pastor, our kind of man. And uh, so I contacted him about two months ago, and I said, uh, maybe it'd be helpful for both of us to join forces for a little while. Their, their building was almost completely destroyed. Ours was usable again. And so for about six weeks, we uh, shared services together, and I would preach in the morning, he would preach at night, and the next week he would preach in the morning, and I'd preach at night. And we did that for a couple of months. And then two Sundays ago, we went back for the last time. It was Mother's Day in Thailand. And so we had a Mother's Day service, had over 60 moms in the service there and gave gifts to them, had a great day, and then we said goodbye to all of our people. Last Sunday, we had the opening service of a brand new church in Hue Hin in Thailand, and had 35 people crammed in a very small room and birthed a brand new church. I just want you to know God's still working, and uh, we, are, uh, we, haven't, we haven't stopped anything there. Uh, things continue to move forward, and I spoke to my wife this morning, and they went out soul winning and had some people saved and had another great service uh, last night, which was their Sunday. And um, I can't wait to go home. I'm flying back Wednesday morning for a, a quick 22-hour flight and uh, going back, back, back to work again. And uh, I appreciate uh, every one of you that prays for uh, myself or my family or the Thailand team, uh, those of you that give and support the work there. And on behalf of the Thai people, I thank you. Uh, God's doing a great thing there. I've said since we first got there, everything in Thailand seems to happen in fast forward. People get saved. They get baptized the same day. They bring their friends and neighbors the next Sunday. They're bringing their own first-time visitors. Uh, they're soul winning and tithing within a matter of weeks. And they're just hungry for the gospel there in Thailand. 97% Buddhist, but most of them don't want to be. They just want to know for sure they're going to heaven. And uh, God's given us a great work there, and I'm so honored to be part of that. And uh, thank, thank God for the people that are, are part of the Thailand team. Um, I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to open to Joshua chapter 1. And fellows, I'm going to use this handheld mic at least part of the time tonight, so if you just have that ready for me. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, we have a little bit of an introduction there in verse 1, and then God begins to speak directly to Joshua. And Joshua's at a very difficult point in his life because for Joshua's whole life, Moses has always been there. Moses has been his leader, his man of God, his preacher, his prophet. And Joshua has followed him his whole life, and now suddenly Moses isn't there. And for Joshua's whole life, the goal has been to get to the promised land. And his whole life, he's followed Moses, believing that Moses would bring him into the promised land. And now suddenly, Moses is not available to lead him into the promised land anymore. The Bible says that Moses died. And Moses died because he sinned. If I can say this carefully, Joshua lost his leader because of sin 
And now Joshua is in a very difficult position. I think that Joshua was a little bit lost here. And as we look through the next few verses, I think you'll agree with me that Moses was in a similar situation that a lot of us were just a few weeks ago. Had to be a really difficult time. Because when you read through the story of Joshua's life, you can see very easily that Joshua really bought into Moses. He really decided that he was going to give his life to this one man and let him make decisions for him, and he was going to back him 100%. And you can see that Joshua sided with Moses many times. The Bible says specifically that Moses laid his hands on Joshua. Now this is in the Old Testament before it was part of the New Testament church for the pastor to lay hands on uh, new preacher boys and ordain them, but Moses literally laid his hands on Joshua and ordained him to be a follower. The Bible says at one point that Moses brought Joshua up and put him in front of the people and literally took some of his own honor and placed it on Joshua. He, he made him a staff member is what he did. He said, folks, uh, here's a young man. You don't know him, but I'm giving him my endorsement. I'm giving him 100% of my approval, and I want you to respect uh, this young man like you respect me. And the reason that Joshua had the respect of the people was because Moses had given it to him. Now, there is no question that Moses was a great man. Moses had done some pretty amazing things. God used Moses to bring the people out of the land of Egypt. Moses was instrumental in all of the ten plagues. Moses was there at the crossing of the Red Sea. The most mentioned miracle in the Bible uh, was by the rod of Moses being held out over the water. Uh, when they went into the wilderness, Moses was the one who led the people and told them where they were going to go. Uh, there's the pillar of cloud. We're going to follow it here. Uh, Moses was there for many of the miracles. And the people honored Moses and held him up almost as a deity. He was the lawgiver. He was the one that had brought the word of God down off of Mount Sinai and said, here it is. Here's what God wants you to do. Here's his laws for your life. And so here's a great man that, that Joshua said, I'm going to give this man my heart. I'm going to give him my life. I'm going to give him my reputation. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to lay everything at his feet. Moses is my leader, and anybody that wants to know can know. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm going to follow this man and give him everything that I can. And then Moses messed up. And I want to read a little bit between the lines here, but uh, Joshua was human, just like we are. And I, I guess that Joshua probably had some times where he asked himself, did I make a mistake? Uh, maybe, maybe if I'd been a little more alert, maybe I would have seen some signs. Uh, I mean, I remember the day I was coming down the mountain following Moses, and he looked out and saw the camp, and he saw the people dancing and worshiping that idol, and he took those tablets in, in a temper he threw them on the ground and smashed them. Uh, Moses literally was the first person to break the Ten Commandments. Uh, and Joshua said, maybe, maybe I should have picked up on that. I mean, now it's obvious he had a temper problem. And, you know, come to think of it, I, I, I remember he, he was married. He, he had a wife. He, he had Zipporah. And then he went and married an Ethiopian woman. Why, why didn't I pick up on that? Maybe I should have seen something I didn't see. And, and, and then I was there. I was right there. And I, I heard God tell him to speak to the rock. And, and he lost it again. And hit that rock. And maybe I should have grabbed his arm. I wonder if there was something I could have done. Did I make a mistake? And now, now, now that this has happened, all the rumors are resurfacing about the time that Aaron messed up and made the golden calf, and Miriam went against Moses and had leprosy for a week. And, and uh, man, I, I don't know if Joshua went on the blogs, but if he did, he was messed up. And he was human. Maybe I, maybe I never should have given my heart to that man. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that step. And here, here sits a good young man whose heart is after God, who's followed a servant of God. Don't forget Moses still had that title. 
He followed a servant of God. And now the question comes, now what do I do? Did I waste all those years? Do I still have a purpose? Is my ministry finished? Those of you that know my story know that I bought in to Brother Scott very deeply. You've heard him tell many times how I came right here and stood right there on that step and raised my arms up and I said, Brother Scott, I give you my life, not once, but twice. I sat in his office one day and he said, Brother Bushy, there's three rules I have for my staff and one of the rules is you've got to buy into me. You, you've got to want to follow me. And I said, Brother Scott, I want to with all of my heart. In fact, if you ask me to, if I, if I have the opportunity to work closer with you, I'm willing to walk away from a church that I gave 12 years of my life to establish in New Zealand. I'll up my, root my family. I'll sell our property. I'll sell our house. I'll give up everything that I have if I can just come and work a little bit closer to you. And just a few months later, when he called and offered me the opportunity to lead the Thailand team, it was one of the greatest days of my life. What a wonderful, what an amazing thing. Brother Scott inspired me. Every time I saw his face, I wanted to do more for God. I, I remember walking into my house one day and the television was going. The kids had put a video in from uh, either a youth conference or a pastor school. and The DVD was playing and he was preaching, but somebody had muted it. And I stood there and I watched him preach. I couldn't even hear what he was saying and I wanted to go soul winning. I wanted to just do something for God. I was constantly inspired by his passion. Many of you did the same thing, maybe not to that extent. Maybe there's not a story, but you made a heart decision one day. You said, you know, that man gets me fired up. That man, God uses him to speak to my heart. And I want to come and I want to hear him preach on a regular basis. I want to work for him. Uh, some of you are here tonight because you're college students uh, and you're coming to enter Hiles Anderson College for the first time. You're going to be brand new freshmen. And one of the reasons you came was because you wanted to put your life under Dr. Jack Scott, you've already paid your entrance fee you can't get that money back and you're sitting here tonight and you're saying did I mess up did I did I waste my money I mean I'm here but am I going to stay for the whole four years I don't know what to expect I mean I came because I wanted to follow him and he's not here anymore what do I do now and those questions are very normal very natural when I heard the news, uh, we had just come here for a month. We were here uh, through most of the month of, of July. My parents had their 50th anniversary, and we went and got to visit some family, and uh, we took the first vacation we'd had as a family in 16 years, and so we were here. And I was back home on Tuesday night when I heard the news, and immediately I called a couple of staff members to confirm, is this possible? Can it possibly be true? Yes, it's true. And I sat there in the little room where we'd been staying, and I was, my, 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 my luggage was right there. I was getting ready to get back on the plane to fly back to New Zealand. Wow. Should I go? I'm supposed to go home and get my, my son, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Am I supposed to bring him back? What, what do I do? And I felt a lot of the emotions that a lot of you felt. Uh, my flesh felt shock and disbelief and betrayal and fear and uncertainty and maybe a little bit of anger and even the slightest touch of superiority. I thought, well, what do I do now? The next morning I got up and I opened my Bible to read my Bible and I opened to Joshua chapter 1. I believe that that was providence. I believe that God wanted to show me something. And it was such an amazing encouragement to me that all I'm going to do tonight is share what God told me. Because nothing surprises God. And God, God taught me as I read through these verses that I did not make a mistake that I did not waste those years of my life. 
but I'm not going to be effective for God if I'm constantly looking backwards that I have to look forward. If you got your Bible open there to Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says there, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Get up. Now, I don't know about you. That, that tells me he was sitting down. Get up. It's not time to stop. It's time to get up. Staff, it's not time to stop. It's time to get up. College, it's not time to stop. It's time to get up. First Baptist Church of Hammond, it's not time to stop. It's time to get up. So you lost a leader. It's time to get up. So you've gone through a hardship. That's what life is. Get up and keep going. There's a whole world out there that's still going to hell. They were going to hell before four weeks ago, and they're still dying and going to hell tonight. Get up. Get out there. Do something for God. If you've got a bus route, don't stop the bus route. Get up. Maybe you don't feel good on the inside, but they still need your help. Get up. Go out and visit somebody. Go preach the gospel. Go hand out a track. Go help somebody. Go visit somebody that's sick, but get up. I've been all over this world. I, I feel like I'm a very blessed man. Some people think I'm crazy because they hate to travel. I love to travel. I've been to visit uh, a couple of our teams. I, I've been to Ghana. You know what's going on in Ghana? People are getting saved and baptized. Preachers are getting called to preach, and they're going out and start new churches. Do you know what's happening in China? People are getting saved, and they're getting baptized. Young men are getting called to preach, and they're going out, and they're starting churches. Do you know what's happening in Thailand? People are getting saved. They're getting baptized. Young men are getting called to preach, and they're going out and starting church. Hey, the work hasn't stopped all around the world because one man sinned. There's still a big job to do, and God said, hey, while you're sitting there in the doldrums, my job's not getting done. Get up. Get up. Get up. Go to work. Do something profitable. I did a little research. In a few weeks, a few months, the deacon board of the First Baptist Church of Hammond is going to have to elect a new pastor, nominate a new man to stand here in this place. When that man is chosen, he'll be number 16. Did you hear what I said? Number 16. You know, in three months, this church will be 125 years old. And I want to say this carefully, and I want to say it gently, but God never promised to preserve the pastor. He promised to preserve the church. Jesus Christ shed his blood for the church. That's you. You're still here. First Baptist Church is still here, and it's been proven over the last three and a half weeks that you are a strong church. God's got a job for you to do. I want you to look down, if you would, at verse 5. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Now, picture this. Here's Joshua. He's just lost his leader. He's sitting down. He's mulling over his situation. He's wondering what he's going to do next. And God said, hey, hey, Joshua, I'm with you just like I was with him. Hey, I haven't gone anywhere. Hey, Moses is dead, but I'm still alive. Hey, I... I know he's not with you, but God said, Joshua, figure it out. I, I'm still with you. I haven't gone anywhere. Folks, we're in a war. We're in a war. This is a battle. We have an enemy. Somebody say amen. We got an enemy, and he hates us. He's got his guns trained on us. And if he shoots the general, the general may not be there, but the commander-in-chief is alive and well tonight. God said, Joshua, 
I'm here. Look at the rest of the verse. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. That means that when I gave my life to follow the vision of Dr. Jack Scott, and I went to Thailand, and I found out that God was with me, that when Dr. Jack Scott is no longer my leader, God is still with me. Wow. I, I, I'm not really preaching it. I, I'm just comforting myself and letting you listen. But God's still with me. When I get on that plane on Wednesday and I fly back to Thailand and I get off the plane and I go soul winning, Holy Spirit's still working. Jesus Christ is still the king. And if I lift him up, all men will be drawn unto him. He's the one we glorify. And he's doing just fine. Thank you very much. God said, Joshua, get up because I'm still with you. Look at verse 6. He said, Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. He said in verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous. And then down in verse 9, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. He said, hey, just be strong. Paul said to Timothy, be strong as a good soldier. You're in a battle here. In warfare, some people get wounded. Some people go down. Some people go AWOL. Some people are out of the fight, but you're in the battle. Be a strong soldier in the battle. And when somebody next to you drops, it's not time to run. It's time to move forward. Be strong. Be strong. Wow. I don't know, preacher, because, you know, things are different here, and I don't know what to do. How about be faithful to church? I mean, just keep showing up every Sunday. Well, I'm not sure who the new pastor is going to be. God's for the church. Amen? Just show up. The church needs you. You need the church. Just be in your place. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. You got a bus route? Make sure you're faithful to your bus route. You teach a Sunday school class, you keep teaching that Sunday school class. And when you stand up in front of your kids, you be strong for those kids. If you're in front of a group of adults, you tell them, hey, Jesus Christ is still alive and everything's going to be fine because, hey, this is his church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Church is doing fine. Hey, get some courage. Get some courage. You know, you can't have courage without a little bit of fear. There's got to be some uncertainty for courage to come. All right, what's going to happen when college opens? I don't know. I'm sure somebody over here does. I don't know. But somebody's got to grit their teeth and just say, let's just go for it. I mean, really, let's just go for it. Let's just, let's just, let's just clench our fists and grit our teeth and let's just run forward as fast as we can run. Let's just keep going. Because you know what? There's a victory over there somewhere, and we're going to go find it. I came here in 1984 as a, as a college freshman, 19 years old. I didn't know what to expect. I found Dr. Jack Hiles, and he was my preacher for five years while I lived here in this area and went to college. And I loved Dr. Jack Hiles, and I gave him my heart. And I allowed him to influence my life in a great way. But I just want to remind you, this isn't Dr. Jack Hiles' church. This is Jesus Christ's church. When Dr. Jack Scott was elected to be the pastor here, I was one of the happiest people on the planet. I have loved that man since he taught me homiletics when I was 19 years old. I thought, man, they couldn't have chosen a better man, and 96% of the church agreed with me. I still think he did the right thing. And for 11 years, every record this church ever held was broken. But can I remind you, this wasn't Dr. Jack Scott's church. This is Jesus Christ's church. God is saying to a follower who lost his leader, be strong, be strong. When you're uncertain, just be strong. When you're not sure, just be strong. When you're anxious, just be strong. When you want to run, just be strong. Hey, have some courage. In fact, be very courageous. Because now 
is the time that you need to be. Hey, when everything's going smooth and there's no problems, it's easy to be strong then. When there's no attacks and no criticism, you don't need much courage then. It's the difficult times when God says, hey, be strong and have courage. Be strong and be very courageous. Hey, be strong and have courage. Three times God said to the young man sitting there, hey, you got to do it. You got to be strong. In verse 7, he said, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Listen carefully. Do you see what he just did? He said, I want you to keep obeying the law that Moses commanded you. Do you know, I got back to Thailand and I brought my luggage up to my room and I just, I like to unpack my bags immediately. I, I, I hate finding that I left something in my suitcase six months later. And so first thing I do is empty everything out. And I emptied my, my full-size suitcase, and I had my carry-on. I reached in my carry-on, and I, I felt a book. I'd forgotten that I'd slipped it in there. I pulled it out, and it was Counseling Troubled Marriages by Dr. Jack Scopp. And I thought, should I just throw it out? Some of you thought that, too. Should I throw it away? You know, I made a decision. That's the next book I'm going to read. You know why? Because it's right. It's wisdom. Dr. Jack Scott introduced some truths from this auditorium right here that I don't ever want to let go of. Go, win, baptize, teach. It's all about the cross. You remember the great big cross that stood right here? Hey, the cross is still right even when a human, human falls. Is God enough for you? Wow. A lot of wisdom there. Can I ask you a question? How many of you read Proverbs this year at any time? Would you raise your hand? Would you put your hand down? Do you know who wrote Proverbs? Solomon wrote Proverbs. Solomon messed up so bad. My wife said to me one day, honey, if he's the wisest man in the world, how did he make it so bad? You know, you can have wisdom and not listen to your own wisdom. But it doesn't change the fact that it's wisdom. I still read Proverbs. You know, if you go back to the Old Testament and you study when uh, God gave the laws for a king. God said, when, when you choose a man to be a king, there are three things that he is not allowed to multiply. Number one, he is not allowed to multiply horses to himself. Number two, he's not allowed to, uh, to multiply wives to himself. And number three, he is not allowed to greatly multiply silver and gold to himself. Can I ask you a question? What's Solomon known for? 40,000 stalls of horses, 300 wives and 700 concubines, or down southern Indiana, they call them 700 combines. <laughs> and he had so much gold that he coated the entire temple with it, and silver was so common that they threw it out like stones. Do you know that after God gave that law, he said every time that a young man becomes a king, he has to sit down and physically write out the law by his own hand so that he has his own personal copy of the law that he wrote. So Solomon sat there. Let's see, I can't multiply horses to myself. I can't multiply wives to myself. And I can't greatly multiply Silver and gold. Now, where do we buy the horses? And she's cute, and I need some cash. And you read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon by a man that had tremendous wisdom and totally messed up his life. Don't throw your books out. Don't throw your DVDs away. They're still full of wisdom. God said, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. 
He is not going in the promised land. Go do everything he told you to do. Hey, when Dr. Jack Scott said go soul winning, don't stop because he messed up. When he preached about Jesus Christ, it's still true. And every time that he preached and the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart and you made a decision in your heart, that decision is still valid before God. Don't throw it away because a man stumbled. God said, I want you to keep following what Moses taught you. Let's not stop there. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That's not Facebook. That's just book. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Do you know what we're supposed to be talking about right now? This book? What are our conversations supposed to be centered around? This book? If you want to go on Facebook... Put some Bible verses on there. It's about this book. Fill your mind with this book. Not what somebody else says. Not what somebody else thinks. Figure out what God says and figure out what God thinks. The Bible says we're supposed to talk about this book and meditate on it day and night. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Think about heaven for a while. That's true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. Think about the judgment seat of Christ for a while. True, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. Think about somebody whose life is making a change for the better because of God's working in their heart. Why don't we talk about that for a while? Wow, I got a convert and they got baptized. Hey, can I tell you something? I, I was down here in the front this morning and, and I prayed for the offering and so I ended up down there with the staff men and <clears throat> I didn't know what to do. I don't have the little tag, so I'm lost. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a lady came forward and she was weeping and she said to one of the men, I, I need to get saved. And so he led her to Christ there and, and they stood up together and they were smiling. And, and I said, ma'am, have you been baptized? And she said, oh, many, many years ago. I said, well, if you just got assurance of your salvation, you need to get baptized. It's going to help you to make sure you're saved. It's not going to help you get saved. It's going to help you remember it. And we walked across the front of the auditorium and she went up there and she got baptized this morning. Why don't you think about that for a while? Man, she got baptized. This is a Baptist church, right? Anybody else want to say amen? Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Man, that's what we ought to be thinking about. What's God doing? Not what did man do wrong? What did God do right? Let's talk about that. Hey, let's find out the good news from overseas. Uh, what's going on with the Peru team? A lot of good stuff. You want to go online? Don't, don't go on the blogs of the critics. Go on... Uh, <clears throat> fbmiteamworks.org you're welcome John Cole uh, get some good news from the teams amen there's good stuff going on that's what we're supposed to center our mind around God said fill, fill your mind up with this book right here hey how many of you would like to prosper how many of you would like to have good success you know this is the key right here that's it right there in fact, if you, if you were to turn to Deuteronomy 21, verse 8, and don't right now, but please do later, the Bible says, Hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to, to observe and to do. Now, that's an easy verse to just run right past. Let me stop and break that down. The Bible says, Hearken diligently. When you sit down, you read your Bible, we're supposed to be finding out what God wants. <clears throat> God, God said, If all you do is read the Bible so you know the Bible... Knowledge puffeth up. But if you're reading your Bible so that you know God, God said, come on, come on. You draw near to me, I'm going to draw close to you. Hearken diligently. When the preacher is preaching, you have your ears open and your mind uh, attentive. What does God want me to do? How am I supposed to live my life? 
What does God say is right and what does God say is wrong? And then the Bible says that we're supposed to observe to do. Can I tell you something? Most of us are fairly good at learning what God wants us to do. We go to Sunday school. We memorize Bible verses. We, we, fi we figure out what God wants us to do. Do you know what we're really poor at? Applying it to our lives. I mean, when, when, when a husband and wife are not getting along with each other, <clears throat> that verse, a soft answer turneth away wrath, doesn't automatically pop into our heads. You know, we're sitting in the living room, we got our Bibles open, and uh, Ephesians 4, 32, and be kind one to another, tender heart. Well, you kids, shut up, I'm trying to memorize a Bible verse. Be kind one to another, tender heart. We're good at memorizing Bible verses. We're good at learning the truths. We're just not really good at applying them to real life. You know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, and then we're driving down the road and some guy cuts us off. And, and that is not the first thing that pops into our mind. Don't even tell me what the first thing that pops into your mind. I don't want to know. But that is, that is what God tells us to do. Now listen to me. God is talking to a young man who has lost his leader. God said, get up, be strong, have some courage, and get in this book right here. Get in this book and talk about it and think about it, listen to it, learn the truths of it, and then you take some time and figure out how the Bible applies to your life. Because the best thing that the members of First Baptist Church can be doing right now is figuring how do I take the things that I already know God said and apply them to my life. How can I take the truths that I've been taught for many, many years and use them in my actual day-to-day -day living? How do they affect me? Because that's where we're weak. That's where we fall down. God said you can learn the Word of God, but then you have to observe to do it. Okay? I got a command here. God told me to do something. Uh, God said if I get used despitefully I'm supposed to pray for them well that sounds sweet but what do you do when somebody is despiteful toward you well that's it they're going on my blog I'm going to Facebook all my friends and I'm going to tell all three of them what I think about that person and I'm going to start making phone calls because they did wrong, they weren't kind, they, they hurt me, they stabbed me in the back, they were despiteful toward me, and I'm going to make sure it gets even. And God said, you, you, you know that verse. You, you, you've heard preaching on the Sermon on the Mount, you've read it yourself. You, you might even have a little three-by-five card taped on your wall somewhere, it's got written on there. But when it comes time to apply it, how are we doing? When a church is in a time like this, we need to go back to this book and say, where is my weakness? Where are the areas in my life where I've learned the Bible truth, but I'm not using them in my life? Oh, God, show us where. Show me where I'm living my life away from the word of God, and I know the truth, but I have not observed to do it. I want to prosper. I want good success. And so I'm going to get up and be strong and have courage, talk about my Bible, read my Bible, meditate on my Bible, and ask God to show me where my life doesn't line up with the Word of God. 